All right, welcome to this week's news. We are live on TikTok over here, and we are live all over the social mediums. You can get two stories from me that he doesn't know and two stories he knows that I don't know, and we discuss... I have a prediction, though, today. Did you already see the stories? No, I didn't see the stories, okay. but I'm going to tell you that I think that we're going to have one of the same stories, which has never happened before. <laughs> that has never happened, because there has been big news that has happened. Banks have collapsed. Interest rates have gone That's up. Right. And NAR is in the middle the of a lawsuit. Story. Yeah. Well, I'll start it off. I doubt this is going to be the one that we have in common. All right. Miami sees the first population decrease in five decades. Nope, that's not on your radar. Interesting. Miami-Dade County's population shrank between 2019 and 2022. Strangely enough, because we exported everyone from New York City to Florida. So, but there's a reason for it. It shrank by a net loss of 80,000 people. So Miami-Dade County, which is obviously from Miami. From 2019 to 2022. Yeah, which is shocking. Housing costs rose 53%. That's a portion of it. And interest rate went up to 7% just in June. So they're feeling the pinch. I know everyone says, come down here because it's business friendly and tax friendly and everything else friendly. But when you're spending 53% more, your cost of everything is up 7%. People probably move to less expensive areas within Florida. It's not they left Florida, they just left Miami-Dade County. I find it hard to believe, but this is actually coming out of the Miami-Dade uh, governmental consensus. I find it very hard to believe. I know. But maybe it's more less uh, big families living there and more individuals. I mean, that's it's, one guess. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, it went down a lot, the population in uh, the actual age of the people. And I probably would think that a lot of people that were there before, their rents went up a lot and now they couldn't afford it. So Yeah, makes sense. That is my news article. I've got some positive news here. Manhattan sales surge by 37% in quarter two of 2023. Wow. Wait, is that residential? No, it is commercial <laughs> sales. He reads so, my mind. Uh, while the overall market activity is still down compared to historic averages, looking at recent figures and context reveals some upward trends. The current annualized sales activity in 2023 for New York City is $10 billion, which is significantly less than the 10-year average of $34.2 billion, but there was a very large increase in commercial sales in the second quarter. Yeah. So... A lot of people a are, of yeah, I think, so who's buying? That's the question. The yeah. question is who's buying? I, I see it as a lot of internationals. A lot of people bought internationally into the states, you know, the Chrysler building, Empire State building, you know, a lot of Asian, Japanese companies came in, Chinese came in, and I wonder if they're dumping a lot of the properties to someone else. Maybe they're not American uh, owned. So that would be interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, we'll see if it sticks. Talking about international, moving on to number three. This is why I know we don't have the same um, story. Plunging sales of new homes in China's real estate crisis isn't over. So getting accurate data out of China is very tough when it comes to housing. You, everyone knows about the ghost cities and everything else. But this is very interesting because China now owns Hong Kong. They abruptly pulled the 300 million, the biggest developer pulled the 300 million dollar new shares that were going to go into construction in China. So they actually sell it in Hong Kong on their marketplace and then they develop it in China because obviously Hong Kong, probably the, one of the top, you know, followed stock markets uh, globally. And New home sales by China's 100 biggest developers dropped by 33%. So it's very interesting because I brought this up a lot of times, which is there's a lot less people, but there's a lot less get people getting married. So the trend of population is going down. 
we don't know what it is in China or anything like that. But it's very interesting because the Chinese government came in and said that they have new incentives mm. for construction. So if a developer doesn't want to build, is it the incentives or is there no demand? If there's no demand, it doesn't matter what the incentives are. So it'll be very interesting um, what happens because- It's gotta be incentives for the demand. Yeah, right. has to be because they are the top ones. So they're probably government subsidized as it is. And real estate takes up 30% of their GDP. Wow. Which is crazy. That's one third of their economy is tied to real estate. Hmm. So it'll be very interesting, but uh, those are my two, yeah, I'm I guess not as positive. I'm, I'm usually the one with the positive ones, but uh, I, it's always well, something good that. to track. You're the one with the uh, information on Florida. <laughs> so this is why I'm very surprised because your favorite new neighborhood, Gowanus, yes. poised to smash city housing goals years early. Developers on track to exceed target of 8,500 homes, new homes by 2035. I actually did read that. Yeah, yeah, I bet you did yeah. because it was going around. I there's a few articles about Gowanus, and one of them is that there are tax abatements. Yep. So there was a tax abatement in Gowanus, and I thought this was really interesting. We spoke about that last week. We did. If didn't you'd we? like to uh, check that episode out, that's exactly why I found that uh, so interesting. Is the fact that when there was an incentive, like we were just talking about, all of a sudden the developers are the developers are there ready to increase supply and even exceed the demand so they're already exceeding the target that's not until 2035 so you know with a little bit of government cooperation these developers are ready to go yeah uh, it would be nice to see that you know Gowanus really work out well uh, you know they pulled incentives in Sunset Park I believe a couple of years ago and that really you know shocked a lot of developers so you know, let's see it work out in Gowanus and then move on to other neighborhoods. I have to tell you. So I, I saw the place at 500 Fourth Avenue in Park Slope, which is the border of Gowanus and Park Slope. In 2013, it is radically different. When oh, I was man. walking out there, it was tire shops, it was auto body shops, yeah. it was empty <laughs> lots. And now you just look down Fourth Avenue and it's just new developments. Yeah. We were just, or I was just there because we're considering uh, developing a prop property over there with an investor. And it was shocking. Once Whole Foods went in there, the whole place flipped upside down. And the interesting thing about the tax abatements, we spoke about it last week, is that the city would own the land and then they would lease it back to the building. So it's very interesting. It's like Battery Park City, where Battery Park City ha is not owned by the condos in which the building lays, but they rent it out. So it'll be an it's a very interesting way to uh, get the tax incentives, but it's great to hear. Yeah. There was a flooding to Brooklyn in general. Yeah. West Williamsburg, Gowanus. So it's, it's great to hear, and, and it's just getting pushed further and further out. And uh, it's beautiful. It's good to see. It's good to see. So those are the four uh, news articles. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Send us what you'd like us to comment on. What do we do? Like, share, and subscribe <laughs> to the YouTube channel or wherever you're watching this. Yeah, actually the audio has been very popular. So if there's anyone listening on their car ride or gym session, give us a little <laughs> thumbs up. All right, so we'll come next week with uh, more news. Have a good week and we'll see you next week.